increasing throughput with Ether Channel. Just connecting additional cables and more cables between two switches is not going to help your throughput. Why? Because of spanning tree. However, we can solve that issue if we aggregate or bunch those cables together logically using a technique called Ether Channel. Let's you and I play the game of network design troubleshooting. And here's the scenario. We walk into this company and they've got on the third floor, they have a whole bunch of computers connected to a switch on the third floor. No problem. They're all connected at fast Ethernet speed, 100 megabits per second. They, all, they also have a trunk from this switch that goes down to the data center on the ground floor. And this interface right here is also fast Ethernet, 100 megabits per second. Okay, so now what is the problem? <laughs> Well, the problem is that if we have lots of users on the third floor and other floors as well who are all sending in traffic, it's possible that there could be a bottleneck right here. Because if this only supports 100 megabits and we have two or 300 megabits of traffic, aggregate traffic from all these users, we're going to have slowness because of this link in our network. So let's do a hypothetical fix to solve it. To solve it, what the company did is they said, well, let's add more connections. So they connected a trunk here, they configured a trunk here, and here, and they thought, well, that'll give them at least 300 megabits per second because they have three links in place. So what's the problem with this? Well, they discovered that their throughput was still limited to something fairly slow, like 100 megabits. They couldn't understand why. So we walk in, we say, here's the problem. Spanning tree sees parallel paths between switch one and switch two. And as a result, it's going to be forwarding on one port, and it's going to be blocking on two. So you really, you have some good fault tolerance in place, but you don't have any increased throughput. So what's the solution to this? Well, the solution to this, when you have parallel paths and spanning tree is blocking, you need to go ahead and convert those many links to one. Now, to do that, in software, we would do something called Ether Channel. Ether channel is taking two or more links and logically treating them as one big pipe. With spanning tree only seeing one pipe, it won't complain. And as a result, we can get our ether channel with a full throughput of all three links in spite of spanning tree. Let me demonstrate this for you right now. So let me bring in a command line interface and let me show you the topology that we're going to be using for the two switches that I currently have ready to perform for us. So I've got two switches and you'll never guess what the names are. Okay, you'll guess. One switch one, one switch two. So here's switch one, and then we have its good friend switch two. And I've got some ports. I've got 10, 11, and 12. That's the goal of the three ports that I want to use for the Ether channel. 10, 11, and 12. Now up here I'm using gigabit. Down here it's fast Ethernet. So we're going to, they'll negotiate that or we can hard code the actual speed and duplex. That's fine. And then I've got cables that are going between those ports. Now because they're like devices, they're both switches. I need to use crossover cables for all three. So what I expect to happen if this, these are currently in place, Cisco Discovery Protocol should show neighborships, and also I should be able to see that I've got spanning tree in place. So let's see who's the root and who's not the root and which one's doing the blocking. So we'll start that by just doing a quick check with show spanning tree. And VLAN 1 is the only VLAN active at the moment. And it appears that switch 1 is King Kong, he won the spanning tree election, and all of his ports are forwarding, which, would be, we, which is what we would expect. So the root gets to forward on all of his ports. So let's take a look at switch two. Hopefully switch two is doing some blocking. Otherwise, we've got a loop on our hands. And here is switch two, and sure enough, we've got the root port is forwarding, and we've, we're blocking on ports 11, 12, and 37. So our goal is to take 10, 11, and 12, and I'll have them be bound together as a port channel. And then 37, it looks like, will be blocking all by itself. I mean, so that's fine. So we'll have the throughput of three interfaces physically through one logical port channel interface. That's the intent. Let's go ahead and start. So over on switch one, we're going to go through. And the very first thing I like to do is I like to default the interfaces that are going to be part of the port channel just to wipe away any configuration that might have previously been there. It's also important for Ether Channel to work. So I'm going to go to Interface Range Configuration Mode, and I'm going to shut down the interfaces. I'm going to specify Speed and Duplex, and then I'm going to specify Trunking. That I want to use dot one q and then I want to turn on Trunking. That way there's no question about any of these interfaces. And then we'll go ahead and 
tell each of these interfaces that they belong to channel group one, which is going to be our port channel number one. So that's done. Now I don't have logging going to the console at the moment. I'm telnetted to these devices, and so I didn't do terminal monitor. But if we done terminal monitor, in fact, let's do that here. If we go to switch two, and we say terminal monitor here. That way we can see some of the feedback messages as they come up. Also for debugging and troubleshooting it's also helpful. So here we'll do the similar content. We'll work with ports 10 through 12. We'll default them. We'll set the speed and duplex and uh, trunking and we'll also tell each of these three interfaces that they belong to channel group 1 and for our ether channel protocol we're going to use LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol and using the keyword active Channel group one mode active is actually what indicates that you're using that protocol for the ether channel. All right, so let's see if that's going to come up. Now, how do we verify this? Well, what we could do is do a show and get those console messages that I asked for out of the way. Show ether channel summary is showing us that we have port channel number one and it has. S and U. Well, that looks good. So it's a layer 2 ether channel. We can also do layer 3. And U is in use. So FA0 slash 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to scroll up just for a minute. Here's our previous spanning tree with blocking on 11, 12, and 37. And our goal now is to have just two interfaces, port channel 1 and FA037, and forwarding on the port channel. That's what's supposed to happen. Let's do a show spanning tree again. And there we have it. Well, that's great. I'm happy that worked out. So for show spanning tree now, we have, we're still not the root, but we are now forwarding on port channel 1, and our local interface cost is 9, and we're blocking on 37. So now, effectively, we have three times the throughput between this switch, switch 2, and switch 1. So spanning tree now sees it as one giant pipe. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.